We're for sharing innovative treatments and preventing disease before it ever develops. Learn how our team is working to better care for you on this edition of UVA Health System Radio. Here's Melanie Cole. Thousands of children are diagnosed each year with cerebral palsy. What treatments can help improve the quality of life for these children? My guest is Dr. Mark Romness. He's a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at UVA Children's Hospital. Welcome to the show, Dr. Romness. Describe a little bit about what cerebral palsy is and how common it is these days. Uh, Cerebral palsy, or CP as we often call it, it's actually a group of conditions, um, sometimes called like an umbrella term. And it's where there's abnormal development of movement and posture, you know, type of activities, and that causes limitations in their activity. Um, about three or two to three children out of every thousand born uh, have cerebral palsy, and about let's say about ten thousand babies are born each year uh, that will develop cerebral palsy. Um, there are different types of cerebral palsy, and a sort of a spectrum of involvement. Uh, the most common type is uh, what's called uh, spastic cerebral palsy, uh, where the child has muscle spasticity or tightness, um, most commonly of the extremities and sometimes the trunk. Uh, the spectrum itself uh, is very broad, you know, from very mild involvement and very few limitations uh, to much more severe involvement. Uh, an extensive involvement where the child requires full assistance uh, for all activities. Now, what about risk factors in, during pregnancy? Is there anything that you can do, and is, there, is this something that's spotted on ultrasound or amnio early? Not usually. I mean, it's, it is caused by an injury to either the developing fetal or infant brain. Uh, so there is... Um, something related to the brain injury itself that can occur intrauterine, um, but there's no you know, specific known causes you know, during pregnancy um, that can be you know, addressed you okay, know, prior so, to birth. Well, and, and so, you know, women worry about things like this, and is it something you'll know right when you have that baby? Is it something that you can diagnose, Dr. Romness, pretty much right after the baby's born, or is it something that you start to see with developmental and motor, you know, delays? Um, It's not usually uh, completely obvious at birth um, because it takes some time for the brain and the child and the peripheral nerves to develop before you actually start to see um, lack of development. That's usually how the, the diagnosis is made. Okay, so once you start to notice these sorts of things, and I imagine for parents, it's pretty scary. So, Dr. Romness, explain a little bit about the progression of this disease, of this condition or set of conditions, and really starting from the very early age of diagnosis, even six months, a year old, what are parents doing? What are doctors such as yourself doing and even working with early intervention in their school systems? Take us right through. Right. Well, first of all, the um, the injury to the brain itself is considered permanent, but non-progressive, meaning that the, the brain injury doesn't get worse. Um, but the symptoms, you know, that you see in the child, you know, can be cr- progressive with time, you know, especially during growth. Um, so they will start to develop problems as they get older. Um, so that's why it's, it is a progressive condition, but the injury to the brain is not necessarily progressive. Um, so what's done is you sort of monitor those things initially as a a, a diagnosis, Um, and again, they are looking at ways of developing, or they're developing ways to diagnose it at earlier ages. Um, People have been coming up with different ways of assessing that and finding things in children that suggest that the child will develop um, more issues down the road. Um, And then... Your other question was related to treatments and things? Mm-hmm. Treatment plan. And as you know, as you map out a treatment plan and the parents are thinking long term of what they're going to do for this child as they grow and how what physical therapist, you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech and language, how does that all tie together? Yeah. And as you mentioned, it does start early, you know, really as soon as diagnosis is made, it's been found that, you know, intervention with therapies and treatments like that are helpful. You know, most of the states even have what's called an early 
um, intervention program, or it's also sometimes birth to three, uh, where they will evaluate the child and they'll determine, you know, which therapies would be best for the child to keep them, you know, progressing and get them going. Um, from a medical standpoint, uh, most of the treatments are individualized. You know, because each kid has a unique pattern, um, and the, the treatments themselves aren't, aren't, there's no like standard set protocol for treatment, uh, but the treatments tend to be individualized specifically for that patient. You know, the most common treatments used, like you mentioned, are physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Um, other things we tend to use are, are bracing, um, or sometimes called orthotics or orthoses, and those are used to help you know, position the limb. Um, sometimes as they get older, we'll get into equipment issues such as walkers, uh, crutches, wheelchairs. And then there's also um, some medications to help with some of the conditions like the spasticity. There are some medications available to try and treat the spasticity. And then uh, surgically, uh, which I'm involved with as an orthopedic surgeon, uh, tends to deal with things like joint contractures, uh, foot position, uh, hip issues, uh, spine and scoliosis. Okay, so it, these types of surgeries that you would be involved in, what are they intended to do? The main goal is, is for all these kids is uh, function. You know, that you're, you're trying to maximize their function, you know, both short-term and long-term. Uh, so the surgeries are usually sort of restoring or repositioning um, the hip, the leg, into a more functional position. Now, does that stay? Is that permanent? If you do that and you restore that hip into a more, you know, functional position, is that something that then will, the muscles will get lax again and re retreat back to where it was, or is this something that would last for the child's life? Um, again, it's, it's, it's somewhat age-dependent, uh, so there are some surgeries that are better done at a young age, and then they will help the child, you know, down the road, but there's some procedures that we actually wait until the child's a little bit older uh, because if we do it at a young age, the recurrence is pretty high. Uh, so some of the bone procedures where we turn the bone or correct the foot position, we found that it's better to wait till they're older and it's less likely that they're going to need another surgery for that. Now, how is UVA equipped? How are you helping children with cerebral palsy and you know, in your department, Dr. Romnus, braces and things, working with all of that, what are you doing there? Uh, as part of the Department of Orthopedics, we do have the orthotics and prosthetics, which is the brace place. And so they're involved with us in terms of a lot of the bracing issues. Um, my approach is you know, what we call a family-focused approach. You know, we don't just look at the child. You know, we look at the child in their family setting because we you know, find that all that works together. Um, so I, what I do is I kind of assess each child for the unique aspects, determine what I can do to help them now, uh, things that I need to worry about for the future, and then I sort of say, what can I do to prevent future problems and keep them going? Uh, I then determine you know, which treatment is best, you know, both for now and the future, and then discuss that with the family. So um, in the last minute, Dr. Romnus, wrap it up for us about CP and working with the families in giving the best quality of life to children with this. Right. I mean, it is, like I said, family-focused, and I will you know, say that UVA is one of the leaders in that kind of treatment and because we have such a diverse uh, field of specialists who are not only competent, but they're comfortable and excited about taking care of kids you know, with special needs. You know, we have the therapists, we have a dietary and feeding specialists, behavior and developmental specialists, dental, ENT, gastroenterology or GI, orthopedists, neurosurgeons, you know, to name a few. And you know, we're also, I will put a plug in that, you know, just one of our developmental pediatricians, Richard Stevenson, he was just elected uh, president of the American Academy for Cerebral Palsy and Developmental Medicine, uh, which is the main organization for practitioners. Um, so you could say we're at the forefront of the field with that. Oh, that is great. Such good news. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark Romness. You're listening to UVA Health System Radio. For more information, you can go to uvahealth.com. That's uvahealth.com. This is Melanie Cole. Thanks for listening.